This is APFC and I will show you how it works. So we have a voltage source here with a sinusoidal waveform. And here we have a rectifier, which simply takes the absolute value of the S and then we get VI. So it has this waveform. And then we have a boost converter with a load. So what a boost converter does is converting from AC to DC. The rectifier is pretty straightforward. So we only look at the boost converter with a sinusoidal or the absolute value of a sinusoidal waveform as the input. Now, when analyzing the PFC, we assume that the power factor is one, which means that the current and the voltage has the same waveform. So the current from the source has this waveform, and then the input current to the boost has this waveform, and the load current has this waveform. Now I want to look at the boost converter. So if you're familiar with the boost, just skip this part. So we first look at the boost when the MOSFET here is on. So when the MOSFET is on, you can see that there is a ground voltage here. So when it's on, the ground would be here as well. So the voltage over the inductor is equal to VI. VL would therefore be equal to VI. Now we also know that VL is equal to L multiplied by the change of current in the inductor when it's on over the change of current, over the change of time. Now, if we solve for the current, the change of current, when it's on, we get VI, and then multiply by the change of time, and then over L. And because we know that the change of time needs to be positive, and VI is always positive or zero, and the L is a constant, we know that this needs to be greater than zero or equal to zero. Now, when the MOSFET is off, the voltage over the inductor is equal to VI minus VO. So we have that VL is equal to VI minus VO. Now, because this is a boost converter, we know that VO is larger than VI. So this VL is negative, below zero, or it could also be equal to. Now we want to find the change of current when it's off. And that is, so we have VL multiplied by the change of time over L. And since VL is negative this time, we know that this is less than zero. So it's decreasing over time. In steady state, the current over the inductor cannot rise to infinity. Therefore, on average, the change of current over the inductor needs to be zero. So we could just write that. So the change of current when it's on plus the change of current when it's off is equal to zero. So if you just put in these equations here, we have, so we have VI over the change of time over L plus VL over the change of time over L. So this is when it's on and this is when it's off. And this is equal to zero. So we can see that we can just simplify this by canceling out the L. And the time here is different for when it's on and when it's off. So we can't get rid of that. Now, if we solve this, we have VI multiplied by D and the period, the duty cycle multiplied by period is the change of time when it's on. And then we have plus, now we substitute for VL. So we get VI minus VO. And then we have the change of time when it's off, which is one minus D multiplied by the period. And this is equal to zero. So we can reduce this even more by canceling 
uh, the T's, the periods. And if we put VI together, we have D my plus one minus D, right? And this would just be VI. And then we have minus VO multiplied by one minus D is equal to zero. So this here is equal to one. Now, if you move this over to the right side and solve for VO over VI, we get one over one minus D. So this is the gain of the boost converter and it holds even though the input voltage uh, isn't a perfect DC. So the thing that is different from the regular boost converter is that the duty cycle is not constant. So if we rearrange this equation, we can write that D is equal to one minus VI over VO. And in steady state, we know that VO is constant and one is obviously constant. So we have something that is not constant here. And VI is not constant. It has this waveform. And therefore, VD, no. And therefore, the duty cycle would have one minus this waveform, which is the opposite, this waveform. In order to have a power factor of one, the input current into the boost needs to have the same waveform as the input voltage here. So if we would take this one, but now the current won't look exactly like this. It will look a little bit different. So because we have a MOSFET that is switching on and off, the current will also do this. So we will have a ripple. So if we like go like this, right? So on average, it would be a sinusoidal waveform or the absolute value of the, a sinusoidal waveform. Now, in order to get this waveform, you need to ad adjust the duty cycle. So when the duty cycle is one, the MOSFET is always on, which means that the voltage over this inductor here would be equal to VI, which is positive. Now the inductor would be equal to one over L and the integral of the voltage over the inductor. If the voltage over the inductor is always positive, the current will increase till infinity. But then if the duty cycle is zero, this MOSFET would be off, which means that the current going through the, no, the voltage over the inductor is negative, or it depends on the output voltage. But if we assume that the output voltage is higher than the input voltage, the current or the voltage over the inductor will always be negative, which means that uh, the current will be falling. And in between one and zero of duty cycle, we have a steady state where the current doesn't change on average. At this point, the change of current is at max. And at this point, the change of current is zero. So the duty cycle will be at the maximum here and then be at lowest here, right? So it will look like this as we explained earlier.